Hi and welcome to this video log with me Wayne from SwimmingCyclingRunning.com Well it's, a, it's a, a time since I've actually spoken about my pet love in triathlon which is swimming um, and today I want to speak about efficiency in swimming and efficiency is hugely important uh, I'm going to show you some examples of inefficient swimming uh, and you'll see why inefficient swimming perhaps um, causes you to do three things. It causes you to slow down, it causes you to move in different ways so that you might not be moving in the right direction and it causes you more importantly in triathlon terms to actually use more energy than you need to use. If you want to be scientific you have to quantify your model of swimming and a lot of coaches and a lot of people use this particular model. Stroke length times stroke rate equals distance swum and that can be anything your stroke your, your, your stroke rate is normally measured by minutes but you could actually measure it by hours if you wanted to so, so, so it works out like this if I do 1.5 meters as a stroke rate stroke length from there to there and I take 60 strokes in a minute then effectively my distance is going to be 90 meters in that minute that's fairly simple. It's a simple model. And I think that is where that model falls down. Because we don't actually swim simply. You'll often see a swimmer take 1.5 meter stroke rate but move 2 meters because they're so efficient. How does that model take into account that swimmer? It's not going to work, is it? We also see a lot of people do this. And they're slipping the water. So that 1.5 metres is not actually going to move them 1.5 metres, it might move them only 1 metre. Again, efficiency has been affected, but the model hasn't taken into account that efficiency difference. So how do we account for that efficiency? Well, I think I have a model that might actually do that. Let's go to the computer and have a look. OK, so here we are just looking at my iPad. I'm going to describe the basic model that everyone follows, which is this. Stroke rate times stroke length equals distance swap. And you can see why that's so, not so nice. We've got two things effectively we can work on and two things we can improve uh, in a swimmer to make things right. Now I would take stroke length to mean the ultimate distance that your hand travels from forward to backwards relative to your head or your one part of your body. Um, however, I would like to change that to stroke rate times the efficiency of stroke length equals d. And you can see now what we've effectively done is we said, okay, we've now got three things we can work on. We work on. We can work on the stroke length, which is the distance your hand travels forward to backwards in your body. The efficiency of that, that'll be a number where, for example, if your arm travels 1.5 meter, but through the water you travel one meter, then your stroke efficiency rating will be 0.6. If your hand travels 1.5 meter uh, and you travel 3 meters, then your stroke efficiency index is 2. And you can see how that would work. So we can work on all of those things to make you a better swimmer. We can take it at least one step further. We can take that equation stroke rate times the efficiency of stroke length pull plus stroke length kick equals d. Now we've subtly increased that to one, two, three, four things we can potentially work on to improve the swimmer. And of course stroke length pull and stroke length kick might not be the same. You very rarely find someone who is equally as good at pulling as he is at kicking. Um, there are some people who can kick 100 meters in, in 105, 102, but they very rarely swim it in less than let's say 40, 49, 50 seconds. There's got to be a difference between the pull and the kick, which leads us to the final element, um, the ultimate uh, expression of distance swum as stroke rate times, I'll open the bracket there, efficiency one, strip stroke length pull, plus efficiency two of stroke length kick equals distance. And you can see why that's even a nicer model because we now suddenly get one, two, three, 
for five things that we can work on. As I say, it's very unlikely that the stroke length pull and stroke length kick are equivalent, which also tends to imply that the efficiency rating for each might be different. However, how we judge stroke length kick is vital in that relationship. I'm not quite sure how we do that. We're going to come back to this with experimentation next week. But you can see here how we can expand what we can do with the swimmer if we just take the basic model and actually think about it and improve upon it and get extra elements that we can potentially work on with each swimmer. So there you go. That's how I would like to, to think of swimming as an equation. And it's that efficiency that we need to quantify. We need to find something that actually calculates that efficiency and can actually account for it. And I think there may be a way to do it. However, what you need to know is what happens when you're inefficient. How can we see that inefficiency working? I think I have a couple of videos that might help you. So I'm just going to go to the computer, show those videos, and actually illustrate exactly what I mean. OK, we're initially going to look at underwater kicking because we can actually judge fairly well how underwater streamlining and kicking is going. We'll just run this video through at normal speed one time. And you can see the first girl, she's a bit deep in the water, but the actual kick is incredibly good. She's kicking in the right direction, she's very streamlined. Until she comes to the breakout, that's fine. But now we see someone who isn't efficient at all. Everything's moving in the wrong direction, as you can tell. And the girl behind, who's more efficient, is catching up. Now, the boy in front is a faster swimmer, so that really shouldn't be happening. OK, now let's look at the efficient swimmer once more. She's in a very streamlined position. You can see that that really does look like she's going to arrow through the water. And as she kicks, the kick is very much within her body width. Look at her toes. They're actually still just outside her body width, and again, just outside her body width. So everything is really efficient, driving her forward in the right way. Now let's look at Adam. You can see already the position he's in is actually not aerodynamic or streamlined. So let's just roll that forward. And you can see suddenly he becomes a curve. So we've got this curve here. And curves are never good in swimming. They're never good if you want to be fast. Look at the amplitude of his kick. Um, if we drew a line on the top, and the line on the bottom, he's well outside his body width with his knees here. And you can see that completely hitting against the water as he's meant to be driving forward. Kicks forward, goes into that curved position again, yeah, which is not a good position, it's not streamlined. And then knees come above body width. You can see this whole position is not streamlined at all. And that's the type of thing we obviously want to improve on. Now after we showed him this video on Paul's side, this is the difference. We had a much more streamlined Adam uh, kicking uh, underwater. He's much faster, in a much better position. We still have a little bit of bend in his body and an over kick so that we're now kicking back against the water, which we don't really want. But overall, that's faster and notice the girl behind isn't catching up at all. OK, so just as a last example, let's have a look at this girl swimming. In an effort to be fast, this girl is completely missing her catch. Uh, and what you'll see is a very fast entry and loads of bubbles around the hand, which means she's not held the water, and a very wide pull. That is where she's effectively starting to drive the water. Other hands coming in, look, driving down instantly missing the catch is now a straight arm and that's where she's trying to grab the water. Very inefficient, very wide. As soon as you go wide you reduce the length of your pull and you can see all those bubbles around the hand which means she's not caught the catch. Okay so there we have it. How efficiency can actually change how you swim. And you can see exactly what I mean. Efficiency was hugely different in those two swimmers underwater and underwater it's pure efficiency that's going to move you. On the surface, as we've seen, we can have different kinds of arm pull instead of a straight through pull. That will affect your efficiency. But there's also another way that we can affect efficiency. For example, very few people have looked at the kick propulsion versus the arm propulsion and how that affects your efficiency. And hopefully we'll be able to talk about that ne next week. So this is going to be a two-week thing. 
Next week I'm going to be talking about exactly the same thing, efficiency in swimming. Hopefully you'll come back to it. See you then. Keep well.